Good morning. Welcome to the 2020 State of the University Address. I'm Gail Hackett, Provost and Senior Vice President for Academic Affairs here at Virginia Commonwealth University. I'm very pleased to welcome the many members of our VCU community who are here today in the James Branch Cabell Library, as well as the many others who are joining us via live streaming through our website. I would also like to welcome a couple of very important visitors who are here with us today. Our VCU Board of uh, Visitors member, Ben Dendy, and I'd also like to acknowledge Council, Councilwoman Kim Gray, who's with us as well. Thank you. The State of the University Address is an annual tradition that lets us reflect on our many successes and think about our goals and aspirations for the year ahead. Before we welcome President Rao to the stage, we'd like to take a couple of minutes to meet some of the many people at VCU who exemplify our university's national prominence. get into a laboratory setting, you realize that experiments don't always go exactly to plan and failure is okay in science. You take that as a learning experience. It just teaches you like a whole new way of understanding the knowledge and understanding the material that you wouldn't get from just simply reading a textbook or having somebody teach you this material because you're doing it yourself. It throws them into um, uncomfortable situations where they themselves have to come up with solutions, have the confidence to implement them and then have the satisfaction of solving that problem. The lab that I'm working in now is pretty much the exact match to my, my initial research interests. Um, I was lucky enough to, to find someone uh, studying what I wanted to study. The buildup of knowledge that I'm gaining from this experience will help me be a better scientist. VCU is a very rich environment for a lot of students who really want to succeed and have a lot of initiative. It's really uh, catapulted me career-wise and, and where I want to be in the future. That's kind of what drives me forward, is like knowing that my research is actually making a difference. The rhetoric course forces the student to examine only one problem over the course of the entire semester. You get to pick out your own project and you have to spend a whole semester looking at that project in great detail. We're able to look at the problem and it's part to not be overwhelmed as it exists as a whole. It's a class about learning how to be information literate, make connections, and how to synthesize information. It's the beginning of a professional level of researching and writing. Those are the skills that students are going to need to make a difference in the world. What we really want people to do is be original thinkers so they can solve problems. It really helped me work on my own independent project in my discipline, and I couldn't have done that without learning those skills from rhetoric. The School of Engineering selected 15 projects from the community and a NICU nurse came to us and said, I need a better way to control the light environment in the neonatal ICU for premature infants to sleep better. Our passion in medicine and our engineering background are merging to create a product that can solve a huge problem in the world. They're smart, they're enthusiastic, they're energetic, and they're really goal-directed. It's solving problems that need solutions. Um, and with Brisa Led, there was no solution. Where they need perspective is the business side. How am I gonna take this product and really bring it into a market. It's not just VCU, it's the community that VCU is connected to that has also helped us. It opens up uh, a vast dimension of resources, new opportunities for students. I've always had a passion for improving pediatric health. VCU has met my interests with remarkable opportunities.
What a great video. In fact, I want to ask all of those who are part of the video, if you'll just stand very briefly so that we can recognize and thank you for being a part of that. And I really, really appreciate um, uh, the, the title of the video, um, A New Paradigm for Higher Education, because that's really what we are all about. Gail, thank you so much for that great introduction. You're a vital partner in the work that we're doing that's very urgent, of course, to support our faculty and our staff in ways in which they help shape our students' lives and through their educational experiences. So thank you very, very much. So, it's always astonishing to see the depth and the breadth of talent across VCU, the lives that we touch. You saw a lot of that in the video. This is exactly why VCU is the quintessential 21st century American research university. We're elevating the human experience in transformative ways, and we're elevating the extraordinary impact that a university can make on people's lives. So let me give you a few examples from just this past year, some really cool examples. So in 2019, many of you know that our research expenditures topped $310 million, which was a record, and it's a great record. It was an incredible 14% increase over 2018. But you know what's much more important than that? is making maybe a 14%, maybe a 25%, but a much larger impact on society because our innovative spirit answers humanity's most important challenges. Like our colleague, Steve Wolf, his great work documenting why life expectancy in America continues to decline despite the great advances that we're making in modern medicine. Many of us saw the great, these findings on the front pages of the New York Times and the Washington Post. That was just before Thanksgiving. Steve, I'm so proud of you. Or Dave Sifu and his stunning progress that's helping veterans to overcome what we call TBI, traumatic brain injury, backed by a brand new $50 million grant from the Departments of Defense and Veterans Affairs. Dave and VCU lead a team of 42 university and treatment centers around the country. And this builds, by the way, on, you might remember the $62.5 million grant that we got back in 2013. But for David, this is $250 million in the course of his 20 years of research here. And of course, recently, the $112 million. But what's really important is that Dave and his team, VCU, are leading a really, really important initiative right here at VCU, and that's extraordinary because it's important to the entire country, and probably the world for that matter, for the kinds of things that Dave and his team are finding, and things that are being implemented to help people with traumatic brain injury. Then there's Christine Bay and her revolutionary approaches to helping kids in urban middle schools get access to learning the language of science so that they can become the architects of our future. The National Science Foundation supports her with another million dollar grant. Frank Gupton, another of our colleagues, continues to expand access to life-saving medicines. He was just honored, by the way, by the National Academy of Inventors. You've heard of his project, Medicines for All. And then there's Heather Lucas, who's discovering how metals in the brain might accelerate Parkinson's disease. That's really important when one in six people in the world is dealing with a very serious neurological disorder that affects the quality of their lives. Heather, you might remember, is part of our Wright Center, our Clinical and Translational Research Center, which is a national leader in biomedical informatics. And then there's Tressie Cottom's work of, around black womanhood, her great examination that resulted in Thick and other essays. That was a publication that earned nationwide praise, and it was a National Book Award finalist. You might remember, if any of you watched her on TV, she was on The Daily Show with Trevor Noah. She appeared because what she has to say is important and relevant to so many people. Our faculty is forward thinking about the things that will matter to all of us as human beings. And last year, we reached our goal in the Make It Real campaign for VCU. About a year early, 
And while I'm excited about that, I have to tell you that we're still going strong because there's still time left in this campaign, and we're dedicating a really critical new phase to ensuring that more students can stay in school and graduate on time. You've heard of it. It's the Invest in Me campaign, and that's exactly what we're doing. We're investing in the success of all of our students, and many of our students have the need that we can satisfy with resources. It's not surprising then that our students are succeeding in record ways, including a graduation rate that's now 40% higher than about 10 years ago, a decade ago, and 10% higher than the national average. And we've done this at a time when across the United States, fewer than half of college students are actually graduating on time. And it's fewer than 15% of students from the lowest socioeconomic bracket, those who can, of course, benefit the most from a college degree. At VCU, we continue to focus on the outcomes and experiences of every student on their way to graduation, and we'll continue holding ourselves to the highest worldwide standard. And I know all of you will join me in that. That's VCU. Students come to VCU because of our unique educational opportunities, creations that are like no other institution, like the nation's very first PhD in pharmaceutical engineering, which will launch this fall, and our College of Engineering's new recognition as a national center of academic excellence in cyber defense. By the way, our new certificate in digital literacy, which we developed together with the Greater Washington Partnership, I had a chance to be with the Greater Washington Partnership earlier this week on Monday to talk about this great thing that my colleagues at VCU have done. I gotta tell you, this matters more than ever in our modern economy, and it needs to become a signature of every student's VCU educational experience going forward. It's a language, it's a way to connect with the world. Our students, no matter their major or degree, will be innovative and digitally savvy so that they can help shape the 21st century experience for all human beings. And we're gonna help them get there. Our students can also learn in great new facilities, facilities of the future like our Health Professions Building that we just opened in June, or our 6,000-foot biomedical informatics facility that fast-tracks life-saving research in neurology, opioid addiction, and other critical areas. Critical because they're critical to people. They need problems to be solved. They need our help. Most of you know that I have long held the completion of our children's pavilion, our children's hospital at VCU, as a top priority. Well underway are both our children's inpatient and our adult outpatient pavilions on the same block, by the way, as well as the engineering research building at Cary and Belvedere. And soon, we will break ground on our new STEM building on the current site of Franklin Street Gym. By the way, we have nearly 11,000 STEM majors at VCU. That's important, and it's helping Virginia in ways that are very important. I'm so grateful to our General Assembly partners for supporting this project, the STEM project at VCU. Why is that important to Virginia and to our General Assembly and to our governor? Because VCU continues to be a university that largely serves Virginia students. We're helping to shape Virginia in really, really important ways. You know, we're also serving our patients in new ways, and it's making a difference. Once again, our hospital, the state's safety net hospital, was ranked the region's top hospital by US News. And it's easy to see why. There are so many things that we do for so many people. One important area is that we performed more life-saving transplants in 2019 than ever before. Nearly 500, by the way, about twice the number of people in this room. Just think about that. It's a lot of people, a lot of lives we've saved. Put all of this together and it's no wonder why VCU rose 14 places in the US News national rankings among universities last year. And the world is noticing the great work that all of you do. You've made us a national leader in education, in discovery, 
in innovation, and in healthcare. You've brought together diverse talents, great expertise, and important vision to solve perplexing problems that matter to people everywhere. You move quickly and purposefully to serve a new generation of students and patients who join us in elevating the human experience everywhere. You are VCU, and you've made VCU amazing. You know, I was just thinking about when VCU was founded 50-some years ago. You might remember that Lyndon Johnson was the person in the White House. You might remember that he, or you might have read, some of you, <laughs> that he focused his presidency on equal rights and access, including education. And why education? Because he knew that what he called great society needed all of us, every one of us, to be well-educated and deeply engaged. Just days into his presidency, he pushed for civil rights legislation that ended up being stalled in Congress. And there was an advisor who said to him that the bill was just going to be way too difficult to advance. But remember what he said. He said, well, what's the presidency for? So here I am, having spent more than a decade at VCU and about half of my life as a college president, asking the very same question. What's the presidency for? What can I do to help make the biggest difference for our university, for our health system, and for the people we serve? So I know I've just cited this long list of achievements from this past year, and I'm glad I did. They're really important. But you might sit there wondering where I'm headed with this and why I'm out now saying to you, why am I advocating for change? I'll tell you why. Because VCU has a chance like no other institution I know, no other university I can think of, to lead American higher education in the 21st century and lead 21st century health care like no other institution I know. And I have to tell you, it's because 21st century America really needs us to. Listen to what people are saying. Listen to what they say they need. And I want you to do some listening with me. This is kind of hard, but I want to share some hard facts with you. A new Gallup poll showed a 16% drop just in this one last year in the number of Americans who believe that going to college is worth it. A 16% drop, and that's just in one year. On top of that, Pew Research found that 61% of America thinks that higher education, colleges and universities, are going in the wrong direction. You might know that Moody's, the rating agency, just posted a negative outlook again for the second year in a row for the U.S. higher education market. In other words, a lot of America looks like it's losing faith in higher education. And we got to pay attention to it because we're here for everyone, not just ourselves. So how did we, how did we as a, a sector, how did we get where we are? How is it that in 2020, a lot of people think we kind of look like we did 400 years ago? I say 400 years ago because that's when Harvard was, st was started, about then anyway. So I actually think it's because newer universities that came along, they kind of just aspired to the elitism of colonial colleges that all came before them. But I want you to think about something when I say that. Think about all the uh, people in America that higher education has realistically left behind. We're trying to get around that at VCU, and I think we're doing a good job. But I want you to imagine what the world could be if everyone had the chance to live their very best lives, if everyone could be a part of the American dream. Just imagine. At VCU, we are changing that story, and we are focusing on performance, not prestige. This is what a 21st century university's got to do. It's what VCU is doing. And it's what VCU needs to take to the next level. We've got to do it. It's why we're here. 
Look around you at this place. Think about the people who are here. Think about all the things that we do. Think about the things we think about. Now it's our chance to make the things we think about real. And I got to tell you, we're a large place, so in some ways, a lot of the things that I'm talking about are going to be hard. But you know what? Think about some of the, the, the previous State of the University addresses I've given to you where I've talked about VCU does what's hard because it's the right thing to do. It's what America needs us to do. The harder it is to do, the more it matters. And the more we've got to do it. And it's time to do it. Let's model this 21st century American research university for everybody. So here's how we're going to do it. We're going to do it with a new student experience. We're going to do it with a new faculty and staff experience. And we're going to do it with a new patient experience. So let's start at the top, our students. And let's start with Jessica Flores, who has an incredible calling to service. Two years ago, when she just started college herself, Jessica helped launch a network of programs and initiatives that she calls You First at VCU. It's basically designed to help first generation students like her figure out how to thrive. About a third of our students, by the way, are first in their family to go to college. So, Jessica, you're helping about 10,000 of our classmates in one form, shape, or another get to graduation day on time. Today, more than 50 U First student mentors have joined her in this great work. In this fall, U First has partnered with the Grace Harris Leadership Institute to help our faculty focus on the unique needs of our first gen students. This really matters. Relative to their peers, first-generation students do more often struggle academically and certainly with finances and with mental health. They're also more likely to need outside employment while they're going to school, which means that they're less likely to be able to take advantage of bridge-building internships and other opportunities that help them grow professional networks that become critical when they graduate and certainly down the road. So then, enter. Jessica Flores, and she said recently, and I'm going to try to quote her as accurately as I possibly can, every one of us is starting something important here. We're the beginning of legacies. She's combined what she's learning at VCU together with a motivating purpose, a purpose that helps other people to succeed. Jessica, am I right that there's nothing like when you're able to do something for somebody else? Nothing more motivating? And I want more of our students to have this kind of opportunity. I want that light to come on. And we as a faculty can do just that. Jessica, we're so proud of you. Can you stand so that we have a chance to thank you for what you've done? <laughs> And as I'm sure Jessica knows, VCU, VCU enrolls more first-gen students than any of our college peers. And that's because we know how diverse perspectives and experiences make us a better, stronger university that graduates better, stronger leaders who the world needs. VCU is about excellence. It's not about exclusion. We are elite. And we will continue to rise in that way, but we are not elitist and we will never be elitist. One in five of our students grew up in a house where English wasn't spoken. We're in the top 1% nationally in terms of conferring degrees to minority students, and we're very proud of that. That is VCU. We were inaugural winners of the first Forward Award serving first-generation college students and Insight into Diversity, a publication, gave us their 2019 Higher Education Excellence Award for our commitments to social mobility and social justice. We've certainly seen the social mobility of our students. Remember some of the things I talked to you about last year? 17% move up two or more income quartiles after they graduate among the highest of any university in the mid-Atlantic. 2% jump from the very bottom quartile to the very top. That's the most in Virginia. And 
A student who's born into the bottom one-fifth of family incomes has a 27% chance of reaching the very top one-fifth after they graduate from VCU, your university that you have created. VCU is a place where students can succeed because they're ambitious, they're brilliant, and they're focused, even when they don't come from privilege, prosperity, or prominence. They get there, though, don't they? What we're doing at VCU is critically important because across America, about a quarter million fewer people actually went to college last year. And about 36 million Americans have college credits, but they don't have a college degree. So I'm committed that VCU is going to help remedy that by continuing to innovate our curriculum and our retention efforts. We're going to re-engage students who have started college, but they didn't finish it, and we're going to help them to complete their degrees. Our goal for all of our students is that if you start your educational journey here at VCU, you're going to complete it, and we're going to help it complete you. Let's make sure that more students can come to VCU and can succeed at VCU. Let's get to the finish line, and let's do it in a timely way. By 2025, we'll measurably increase enrollment for freshmen, for transfer, for working, and for master's level students. Yes, master's level students from Virginia and beyond. I just talked to somebody who's finishing her bachelor's degree, and she's already talking about her master's degree. Right, Kim? We need more people to do that. That's America. And we're going to help everyone develop the skills they need to solve the society's most vexing problems, including the problems that haven't even come to be yet. And we're going to do this in a couple of ways. At this occasion, three years ago, you might remember I introduced something that's be become called the real initiative. I didn't call it that at the time, but all of you know what it is. It's what helps students to put their college educations to concrete use. Since then, REAL has really become part of VCU's soul. Today, more than 75% of our students have a REAL experience, putting us in the top five for universities nationally. Thank you, Gail. About half of our undergraduate courses now include a REAL experience, and that number is growing every day. REAL captured what we've always done in our professional programs. Many of you know this, Peter, and others. Medical school, dental school. We allow students to learn by doing, by showing them how what they can use, how they can use what they learn to help solve problems and create new opportunities that help people. Provide a context in which what you want someone to learn makes sense to them, and then they're going to want to learn it. And we're going to make it easier to access VCU in various ways, including many more online courses and degree programs at the bachelor's level and at the master's level. It's really important. It's what people want. It's the access we need to give people to VCU. Not everybody's going to be able to drop their lives and come here. And sometimes they can do that, but not all the time, like when they have an internship. And it's not here in Richmond. That's part of what helps make VCU a worldwide place. We've redesigned academic advising at VCU by making advisors more available, by introducing technologies that keep students on the path to graduate, and realign career services in ways that ease the transition from the classroom or the studio or the laboratory, most certainly to the boardroom or wherever a student endeavors to be when they graduate. We've integrated student success under Maggie Tolan, whose development of major maps are a key reason why our booming graduation rates have become a national story. We're seeing increased satisfaction in advising in student services, and we're going to invest more resources here. We're working to keep the VCU experience accessible and affordable to more students. I'm committing to you that we will continue these improvements 
and priority service areas and to ensure that our students can be successful. Services to students are critical. We need to be sure we get that right. Just like we say with patients, and I'm going to talk about that in just a minute. We'll accelerate the commitment that we make to our students with a student experience that's more inclusive, more empowering, and it helps them to make the human experience better everywhere. Again, you create that sense of purpose and motivation, and people want to learn. It's normal for human beings to be like that, and we've got to be like that and think like that. Next, my colleagues. I talked to you just a minute about a new faculty and staff experience. Of course, our faculty and staff are core to what we can do for our students, our patients, and society in general. So I want to talk to you about a great colleague of mine who I met within just a few hours of being here 11 years ago, Paul Wayman. Paul had a really big year last year. He directs two centers in our schools of medicine and education. Most importantly, Paul is one of our nation's early pioneers in supported employment. Paul has worked to ensure that millions of people with neurological and physical disabilities can succeed in whatever ways they want and that society is going to be better prepared to help them do just that. He once said something that I thought was just wonderful. He said something like, I vote for unleashing human potential, but happiness and satisfaction. A student just recently said to me that the way Paul talks is awesome because Paul says it in ways that matter to every one of us. And Paul is doing just what he said. Last year, he earned two research grants that totaled about $9 million from the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services that help more people with intellectual disabilities find careers and to help universities just like this one support and prepare them for the workforce. In both of these grants, by the way, VCU leads a national team that includes institutions that are very impressive like Vanderbilt and the University of Wisconsin and I'm sure there are others, Paul. Paul, stand up so that we can recognize you. <laughs> Thanks, Paul. So you need to know Paul is really just one example of the commitments of our faculty and staff to make great improvements to the human experience through research, through innovation, through thinking, through creativity, discovery, and all of those things that really define what we do at VCU. For four years in a row, we've had more patent applications and licensing income than any university in Virginia. And this year, we set institutional records for clinical research, including 900 studies that resulted in nearly 600 clinical trials. Think about the size of this room. Think about that being about three times that. That's pretty cool. And by the way, it's the most in Virginia. So we hear lots about other institutions that are a lot older, and they're great. I appreciate them tremendously. They have a great role. This is what you're doing. This is what VCU is doing. This is the impact it has on the Commonwealth of Virginia. Our work matters, but what I'm really here to say is that it's just beginning. In December, the Board of Visitors endorsed our plan, Ben Dendy, our Vice Rector, is right here, he was a part of that, for achieving social impact through a culture of research collaboration. Our new Vice President, Sri Ram Rao, made a great presentation. This is going to accelerate our commitment to research and innovation in four ways. First, it's enriching the human experience. But listen carefully. It's about enriching the human experience through the arts, through humanities, and the social sciences. Number two is achieving a just and equitable society, something we talk about all the time. It's at our core. We're going to do this by helping to reduce inequality, discrimination, and disparities, and creating knowledge and solutions that are important 
that have the ability to impact the real world. Third, we're going to optimize human health. Remember, that's our founding. We were founded as a medical school more than 180 years ago. By leveraging emerging science and technologies, including that which we create and transforming health and wellness across diverse populations. And finally, we're committed to supporting sustainable ecosystems and translate environmental research to shape our planet in positive ways. We're really going to help in that regard. These inclusive areas, and I say inclusive because this is only the beginning. It's just the first step. We're going to involve everyone who can be a part of this, in this, in the discussion about where we take these areas. The idea is to get this started so that we can engage more members of the VCU community and beyond to have a greater impact on humanity. And I did say beyond, because there's a lot of talent out there that we could work with that may not just be us. And they're going to move us forward. By 2025, we will be among the top 50 public universities in research. We're already in the top 50 among the public research universities, but I'm saying public universities in research. And we're going to be top 25 among our urban peers. At the rate we're going, we're there. We'll surpass $400 million in sponsored awards. And we'll accelerate our commitment to addressing Virginia's most vexing problems and our people's most urgent needs. Look around. They're there. And this is important. It has nothing to do with being important because of the metrics. It has everything to do because it's our mission. And we need resources to fulfill that mission. We're accountable to those who come here to teach, who come here to learn, who come here to discover, to create, collaborate, and of course to heal. And also to those who have never heard of VCU, but who are going to benefit from the technologies that we pioneer, from the cures that we discover, the art that we create in the planet that we're going to help sustain. This is where we will invest because it's where we're called to be. So let me be clear about this. Students will be at the center of where we're going with everything I just talked about because they're at the heart of what we do. And our heart is and always will be great teaching, which we expect and will support in every way throughout VCU. To be at VCU, you really need to be a great teacher. You need to be really good at communicating and connecting with students. That's why we're here. That's why this fall, we're going to open, by the way, in terms of talking about students and engaging them in our work, we're going to open a new student innovation storefront on the ground floor of the Grace and Broad Residence Hall, the one across from the Siegel Center. It's a first of its kind place where entrepreneurial students will join in creating innovations that will accelerate their student experience, motivate them, give them a sense of purpose, but it will also advance the human experience. And this is happening because we commit to research, innovation, and education at every level and because of the generous support of one of our partners, Mark Horgan, who's here today, and the Horrigan Group. Mark, stand up so that we can say hello to you and thank you for your investment. <laughs> and then there's Garrett Westlake, who's leader of our Da Vinci Center, also a great teacher. Would you stand as well so that we can thank you for your commitment to engaging our diverse students in innovation? So you know, whether it comes from our students, from our faculty colleagues, or our staff colleagues, the trademark of research and innovation at VCU is that it's persistent and it's pervasive. It's all of us working together to solve the problems that exist far beyond any of us. You know, the Science Coalition recently asked Americans what they thought about their tax dollars being given to universities for research. 
And guess what they said? The answer this time is actually pretty good. 95%, pretty close to everybody, felt like research that we do is actually critically important for our nation's future in terms of health care, in terms of security, economic development, and energy independence. And 60% believe that even more public appropriations ought to go to university research. These are all areas where we lead, and as I mentioned, where we're going to continue to focus. Not for the sakes of ranking or funding, but for the sake of humanity and for the sake of doing what's right. Okay, finally, a new patient experience. Tyrese Dandridge is somebody I want to talk to you about. He lives for a life of service. He's a school custodian, has been for 21 years, most recently at a place called Pole Green Elementary School in Mechanicsville. There he's called Mr. D, by the way, and one day Mr. D wasn't feeling so well. He told his, uh, or he went, ended up getting treated, and his doctors told him that his kidneys were failing. And so, what did he do? Logically, he began dialysis, and it was also discovered that his heart was pumping at about 10% of normal strength. So he got some medication, but he really, at this point, needed a miracle. He'd require both a kidney and a heart transplant, ideally from the same donor, so that we could minimize the risk of rejection. So while he waited, Mr. D continued dialysis for his kidney. He carried a drip bag for his heart, and he just kept praying, he said, for a miracle. Well, that's what came from VCU. A few months ago, our team from Pauley Heart Center and Hume Lee Center gave Mr. D his new heart and his new kidney in an intricate process and procedure that was about 13 hours. But that 13 hours will extend his life by decades. His care team, led by Kayor Shah and Gaurav Gupta, have performed hundreds of transplants. But it's exceedingly rare to transplant both a heart and a kidney at the same time. So their work made national headlines. You might have heard of it on Good Morning America. It was on Inside Edition, and it was actually in People magazine as well. But most importantly, the very most important, is that it saved Mr. D's life. On his first day back to work, students and colleagues greeted him, and I know there were stories of lots of cheers and hugs, and to Mr. D, that was more than he expected. He had one thought, he said, for that day. He said, I just wanted to be on time. <laughs> kind of person he is. I'm so happy that Mr. D continues to be on time and has so much more time still yet to come. He can't be with us today because he is at work, but we're so grateful for the impact he makes on so many other people's lives. Um, Kayor also couldn't be with us here today, but Gaurav, you're here. Would you please stand so that we have a chance to recognize and thank you on behalf of the team? <laughs> Gaurav looks as, about as sort of wigged out as I do when I look back and see my own photo on the <laughs> screen. That's a big screen. So for about 182 years, VCU Health has worked to give longer, better, healthier lives to everybody whose life we can touch, like Mr. D, and about 261,000 other patients last year. I'll always remember something that a patient told me when I was at one of the hospitals um, one day. Um, th this person said to me, I'm leaving in the same wheelchair, Dr. Rao, but I'm leaving with so much more hope. And this was a patient whose problem we couldn't solve, but um, she believed we could. And that's, our, our, that's really our mission at VCU. It's so different than any other hospital, and it's what inspires me and makes me so proud of being a part of VCU. It also reminds me of the critical um, work that we do every day and across VCU and VCU Health, together as one enterprise, to advance the health and well-being of people and to give better outcomes to the people who need us the most, people who don't have the kind of access that 
all human beings should have. We serve patients that other people can't, and we serve them in ways that other people can't. That's why VCU health is VCU health, right? It's an academic medical center. And I'm really proud of the work that my colleagues are doing in medicine and pharmacy, people who are working to treat drug addiction right now and the damage that it wreaks. You know, 70,000 Americans died last year from addiction, and it was about 50,000 of those who died because of addiction to opioids. It's now the leading cause of accidental death in the nation. So back in October, Bill Dewey earned a $7 million grant from the National Institute on Drug Abuse, which is one of the NIHs, and that was designed to help solve this problem. In the last few weeks, we've certainly had our help in telling our own story by our own Camille Schreier, who's an extraordinary pharmacy student, who also happens to be, by the way, you might remember the name, the new Miss America, Miss America, she was Miss Virginia, now she's Miss America, and she's impressive. She's using this national stage that she's now got to talk about the work that we do to combat substance abuse. And her platform will make a really big difference. I can't count the number of times that this young woman has said to me, please tell me how I can help elevate VCU and the work that we're doing because so few people really understand what VCU does. Camille will take you up on that. Another of my colleagues sitting over here next to Bill Dewey, Joyce Lloyd, in the Center on Health Disparities, earned a $2.5 million NIH grant to make medical education more accessible to more students so that they can save more lives. Hu Yang from engineering and Shobha Ghosh from medicine work together on drug delivery systems that prevent strokes and heart attacks. The NIH is funding their work at $2.5 million. In April, my colleague Chandra Bhatti performed the first robotic kidney transplant on the East Coast. And by the way, it was one of the first done anywhere in the world. So you're doing amazing work, and you're doing it in a lot of really important places. But the truth is we're motivated to do even more because we know that more people need us. And it's going to take all of us, not just clinicians, not just our health sciences schools, all of us working together as one VCU. One of my colleagues, Steve Wolf, said to me, one of the best things that you can do, remember this is the guy who did all the great work that has helped us to really get a grip on how serious the reduction in life expectancy is, particularly in four of our states in this country where even people who are age 25 to 34, we've seen the greatest decline in life expectancy that we know of in history. He said, you know, Mike, what you can do to help us most is bring more of the talent throughout the university together. And we've got to do that. Because listen to what we're up against. For five years in a row, U.S. healthcare has been ranked the worst in the developed world. The U.S. is last in both quality and access to care. The U.S. is the most expensive. It is known to be the least efficient and the least equitable. Americans also pay more than twice the citizens of any other developed, the citizens of any other developed nation. So I'll frame this a little bit differently so that it makes sense to us. VCU will lead in healthcare access, affordability, and excellence at a time when it's needed the most. We model everything else. We're at the front end of everything else. We are a premier academic health center, and this is what we are going to do. So first, VCU will be number one in safety. We will be the safest hospital in the United States of America, and we will also be top decile in overall patient experience, patient satisfaction, however you want to look at it, including in terms of quality, but also service. It's critical that we take this very seriously. Let's be the best because we are the best. Let's do it every day. We have to be the best, pe we, ha we already have the very best people here. 
And it's the best people who can take care of people in the best possible ways. And I, I want to stop and say thank you to so many of my colleagues who have already made this a focus. I can't tell you how many people have written to me to say, I'm on board, we're going to be the safest, we're going to be top decile in patient experience, patient satisfaction, and I know you mean that, and I am grateful to you, all of you. Let's bring some of our other colleagues along who, for whatever reasons, are not so sure about that. This is where the bus is going, and this is where we need everybody to be who's on the bus. It's where we're going. We're going to lead in our commitment to discovery, including through our healthcare innovation consortium, something that I introduced here last year. We already have 37 prototypes and seven, seven new technologies that are ready to roll for clinical testing, with 60 more still in development. Now that's just 12 months. Even more impressive is who's doing the work. 40 faculty members, 17 students, 15 clinicians, and two patients. And they all have innovations moving forward through the HIC, including new medical devices, therapeutics, and healthcare IT solutions. This is revolutionary, and we're going to keep building on it. Finally, we're going to expand our commitment to health equity. We recently launched the Health Equity Initiative to ensure that everyone in the greater Richmond region has a fair chance to live a long and healthy life. We're working with local and national partners, including urban serving universities, to help address the social determinants of health in partnership with our faculty, with faculty teams here at VCU among eight colleges and schools. Together, we're addressing health equities through clinical services, through education, and of course through research, a core part of our mission. And we're looking at new ways to support patients, especially those who have high readmission rates. They keep coming back to the hospital. And we've got to do this by tackling issues that we know are affecting people like food insecurity, housing instability, and transportation needs. And by the way, we have many people who are our students who face some of those issues and we need to tackle them for our students as well. We'll continue to expand all of this work in the new year. With every patient, we're going to get their care right, we're going to get their service right, and we're gonna get them home and healthy as soon as possible. We want them to come back to us to maintain their wellness. We'll build respectful, civil, professional, inclusive environments at VCU and VCU Health that will lead to better experiences for our patients and our students and every member of our team throughout the institution. And this includes our students. Remember at VCU Health, we're modeling everything we do for our students. We're modeling everything that we do throughout VCU for our students. They watch every move that we make. They watch our facial expressions. They watch all of our behavior. This is about quality, it's about service, and it's about safety together. And I want you to know that I get it. We are well on our way. In 2019, for the fourth year in a row, VCU was in the top quartile nationally for patient experience among hospitals. By the way, eight of our inpatient units are among the top 10%, top 10%, and our pediatric emergency department is actually top 5% in the nation. In the nation, that's amazing. That's not an easy place to make top 5%. It's hard. Because you, you have children and you have parents too. It's not about numbers. It's about lives. It's about there being nothing more important than this. I'm on a mission. I'm on a mission that's driven by my passion for human life and making it a better thing for everyone. And I expect everyone at VCU to be with me. What's the presidency for? Saying things like that. I need everyone's help. And I need your help because it's just the right thing to do because it's VCU. It's what we stand for. I'm asking you to make these things your priorities. I've made them my priorities. They all center back to our patients and they center back to our students. We're gonna get this right. We're gonna get the things that matter right. I believe in you. I believe in us together. 
So in closing, back to LBJ's question, what's the presidency for? In my case, it's for everything that I've just talked about in terms of our student, our faculty and staff, and our patient experience. It's to ensure that we are collectively focused on our mission. We're all together. This presidency is dedicated to that. And as we do this, we're going to redefine the extraordinary impact that any 21st century university can have on its communities, on its people. The public awaits us, and we'll do this really, really well. Thank you, all of you, for a great year. I look forward to the bolder things that we're going to do together in this new year for a society that needs us. Thank you for being here today, and thank you for being on board with me, and thank you for making this a really great journey for the people who need us the most.